What's up everyone? Today we're going to be modeling a Bishop chess piece in Blender 2.92. So first step is to delete everything in your scene with X and shift A, add a, go down to image and add a reference. And there's a link to the reference photo I'm using in the description. So with the reference, we want it to be stand straight. So on the, we're going to rotate it 90 on the X then zero on the Y and Z axis. Hit numpad one, add a cylinder. Then scale that down with S, move it to the side with G, scale it down a little bit more. So that looks good. And then just hit control A Reset the scale. So once you do that, tab into edit mode and toggle X-ray view mode on and hit control R and add a bunch of edge loops. I wanna turn on proportional editing and put it on sharp. Select the bottom vertices, hit S, then shift Z. Uh, pull them out a little bit so it matches the reference roughly. All right, so once you got that section, turn off proportional editing and hit E to extrude the bottom vertices and just left click. Hit S to scale it out just a tiny bit, then extrude it again just to about here. Try to get, we're going to curve this so. Hit control R, add a bunch of loop cuts, then select the bottom vertices, turn on proportional editing, use sharp again. Hide uh, what we just worked on with H so the proportional editing doesn't affect, ruin what we just worked on. So select the bottom vertices, hit S, then shift Z, Go out like this, just curve them a little bit. So it roughly matches this reference. So I'm happy with that. I select the bottom vertices again, extrude down. I hide the top with H. Control R, add a bunch of loop cuts. I use proportional editing, but this time we're gonna use sphere. Select the middle vertices, hit S, shift Z. Let's, let's, let's with the mouse wheel, we can um, expand what the proportional editing is affecting. So, um, so this is about right. Then we can hit Alt H to unhide everything. And go down. Turn off proportional editing with O, or you can hit the button right here. Hit E to extrude, left click, then scale inwards, then E to extrude again. E, left click, scale. Extrude down once, then extrude down again, and make sure just to leave a little space here. So if you look at the reference, so if we hide this, there's a felt, texture or material and we want to leave a uh, space for that so we can select the faces and apply that material so all H to put it back all right so for the top it's very similar to the bottom so just select the top vertices E left click then scale out then extrude again about here add control R add, let's just say, three edge loops, hide the bottom, hit H, turn on proportional editing with O, and we're just going to select the middle vertices, S, shift Z, so we're only moving it on the Y and X axis, axes, so that, that looks good. And select these, 
extrude up about here. Control R, add like three loop cuts. Select the middle. Shift Z. Just do it like we did on the bottom. And then just extrude up again. So we're getting this portion. And then we have this again, which is very similar to what we just did. So select these vertices, extrude up. Control R, add like three loop cuts. Hide this. Select the one in the middle. S, Shift Z. And yeah, that looks pretty good. And let's just scale this in. Alt H to get it back. And let's just move the mesh up a little bit. So when we're, you can kind of see the shape of the head. So to make the head, it's very similar to how we did with the body. So select the top vertices, extrude upwards, add a bunch of loop cuts. Select the top vertices. We're gonna use proportional editing. these so this is kind of trial and error just try to get it do your best just to match this shape here so all right I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so just extrude up again maybe add two loop cuts Select the top, scale. All right, so I like how that looks. So we can hit Alt-H to get the mesh back. And then we're gonna do this top portion, which just select these vertices, extrude upwards, add like three loop cuts. And then let's just select the middle one, S, Shift-Z, Just try to match it to the reference to the best of your ability. So I'm happy with that. And then we're gonna hit Alt Z to turn off the X-ray. Hide the reference photo. Hit three for face select. Inset this face a little bit. G, make sure to turn off proportional editing, G. Z, move that slightly up. Tab back into object mode. So congratulations. We got pretty much the whole of the model done. Now we just need to get that indentation. I think it's like a frown. Let's see here, right here. And we're gonna do that by creating a plane and then using the Boolean modifier. So bring this back. We don't need the reference. Shift A, hit mesh, add a plane, G, Z, let's just move it up. Tab into edit mode. E to extrude a little bit. Alt Z to x-ray mode, select the entire plane, scale it down. R, X, 90, rotate it on the x-axis. Alt Z to turn off the x-ray mode. Then we can just tab back in the object mode. G, Z, let's just move it. Place it where you want the frown. So let's see here. G, that, I'm gonna move it up a tiny bit. Maybe forward. Yeah, just a little bit forwards. Oop. All right, so. I'm happy with it. So select your bishop, go to the modifiers, Boolean, then select the plane as your object. And then if we hide the plane, you can see we have the frown. And if you're happy with it, you can just hit 
apply. Select the bishop again and add a subdivision surface modifier to give a smooth appearance to our bishop. Click and hit shade smooth. Go to object data properties, normals, and hit auto smooth. Tab into edit mode. And so the mesh looks a little bit messed up, but we're gonna fix it with the crease modifier and edge loops. So let's first focus on the mouth. So two for edge select, then left alt click. First, the upper line, shift E to use the crease, and I'm just gonna pull it to one. Do the same for the front line, shift E. Select the bottom. All right, so after you've added your creases, you may notice that the corner still doesn't look right. So to fix this, press one, and then we're gonna select this vertice and hit G twice and move it down. Then go back to edge select mode, select this edge, hit shift E and then add a crease. So just do that same process on the other side. All right, so once you've done, gotten this all figured out, we've lost some of our edges and we can fix that by adding uh, loop cuts. So just hit control R and then just kind of shift it up. And I'm gonna add one on both sides, so control R. And I'm just gonna do this all the way down the mesh on areas where I wanna emphasize the edge. All right, awesome. So select your bishop, I'm gonna go into the shading tab, hit new material, let's just call this wood. I hit shift A, add an image texture. Connect that to the base color. And if you wanna use the textures I'm using, there's links in the description. So let's hit zero, go into camera view. So now if you look closely, I want all the wood to be, the grain of the wood to kind of be pointing down, yet this is sideways. On the rest it looks good, but to get it how we want it, we have to UV unwrap, so. My first cut with alt left clicking here towards the back. And if you hit just right click, you can hit mark seam. Also just separate all our little sections here and marking the seams. All right, so once you have all your seams marked, hit A to select all, and then, then we're gonna hit U and unwrap. All right, and so that looks pretty good. So if we go back to the shading, you can now see that the grain of the wood's a little bit different, but I still wanna kind of customize it further. So I'm gonna add a, a texture coordinate and a mapping node. And we're gonna connect UV right here to vector and then vector to our image texture node. And then I'm gonna change the scale to five. And then I'm gonna change the rotation a little bit. And then once you're satisfied, the image texture is good. And I'm gonna adjust the roughness to 
four. And then I'm also gonna add a normal map. So sh shift A, image texture. And the links to the textures are in the description. So if you wanna use the same one I'm using. So then shift A, add a normal map. And we're also gonna change the color space to non-color. There we go, so that looks good. Go back to layout mode. Gonna hide our plane real quick. Hit tab to go into edit mode. And we're gonna select the faces we want our green felt texture to be. So alt left click. Go into face select with three. Alt left click there. And then we're gonna go to materials. Hit the plus and then hit, we're gonna call this felt, add back our plane, go back to shading, and we have our felt, and just add an image texture. Connect it to base color. And there's a link to the felt texture in the description. And I also think if we go back to layout, hit zero, Z, let's go to rendered so you can see our beautiful bishop. And then we're gonna select that edge loop right there and hit S to scale and then shift Z, just move it in a tiny bit. All right, and let's just move this down. Gonna make our black bishop so shift d to duplicate and then shift z so we'll just have it forward for now go to the materials tabs go to your wood hit the number two here so this will create a new copy and then all we need to do for the black bishop is change the color image texture all right there you have now you have your black bishop so go to layout and we can just adjust our composition a little bit. All right, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully if you followed the instructions, you have successfully modeled a Bishop chess piece. If you like this video and would like to see more content and support the channel, please like and subscribe. Thanks.